This is Matt Ryan with your Frugal Geek Tip of the Day. If you've ever done business with an ISP that gives you one of their routers to use for service, you may have noticed that their equipment is rarely as full-featured as it needs to be. Sometimes there are only four Ethernet ports, and for many geeks out there, including myself, that can be a few ports too few. Sure, that works for the average home where you have one or two computers and a set-top box, but a more tech-friendly household will fill those ports in no time. Where Wi-Fi might seem a logical solution, ISP-provided routers are typically behind the times, leaving you with a slower A, B, or G wireless option where Wireless N would get the job done just fine, but they refuse to update the routers to meet the Wireless N standard. Here is a solution that may help you extend your router's Ethernet ports and give you more room to breathe on your network. In order to accomplish this, you're going to need to invest in two things. The first thing you need is a switch, preferably one with enough ports to connect all your devices and possibly a few extra. For this example, we're going to go with an 8 port 10 by 100 by 1000 switch. I personally wouldn't recommend a hub here because they aren't as efficient as a switch and may leave your network bogged down, especially if your systems tend to communicate with each other frequently. The next thing you're going to need to invest in are some very short Ethernet cables, just long enough to go from point A to point B. Where I might normally advise taking the time to learn how to make your own, extremely short Category 5 or Cat 6 cables tend to cost less than their individual components, so go ahead and bite the bullet and buy this one. If you are installing this network in an environment where Ethernet ports are pre-installed in the walls, you're going to want to... Uh, invest in enough cables to attach each port throughout the home to the switch. If you have an 8-port home, for example, you're going to want 8 of these little cables, or 9 to have an extra. If you intend to run cables from individual devices to the network equipment yourself, you'll only need one small, short one to act as a go-between for the router and the switch. Once you have everything you need, simply connect one end of the shorter cable to port 1, or A, of the switch, and the other end to port 1 of the router. While you can place the web connection anywhere on the devices, having them both on the first port gives you a very quick method of determining the cause of a connectivity problem at a glance. Once you've made the connection and both devices are displaying a connection light, start connecting your devices or wall ports to the switch. An 8-port switch will give you 7 possible system connections with another 3, that's 4 minus the one used to connect the switch to the router, on the router. In a sense, you have effectively turned a 4-point router into a 10-port router. This method works extremely well for the mass, vast majority of home networks and comes in handy during LAN parties and other events where a sudden increase in the amount of systems in your network is expected. This has been Matt Ryan reminding you, you don't have to be rich to enjoy technology.